Hey, what up, Black Twitter fans? It is 2019, and we're coming back at you again. All right, tonight we're talking about R. Kelly and the mess that is him. Also, we're talking about Centoya Brown and how she got clemency today. And Tiffany Haddish is in some hot water with PETA. All that coming up right after this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gone on you with the pick and roll. Younger flame here in sickle mode. Hey, hey, here we are. It's 2019. We are back at it again. What up, Al? Yes. Al, Al, Al. Al and Al tonight. It's like the OG crew. OG crew. Yes, for sure. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm your host, Alina Vision. And tonight, I am joined by my awesome co-host. Hey, everybody. Al G, glad to be here. Let's do it for 2019. Let's do it. Let's do it. Good. Did you have a good Christmas holiday break? I had a good Christmas, good holiday, mellow, and just ready to get started with the new year. Let's do it. Right. How about you? I had a good one. It was nice. It was mellow. Just hung out with family. You know, it was nice to just relax. But now it's time to get down to business. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. We got some business tonight. It is messy business. Messy boots and messy business. Mess up in here. Okay. Everybody's been talking about it. It is the six-part miniseries on Lifetime documenting the alleged sexual abuse allegations of R. Kelly. This one has lit black Twitter on fire. Not even black Twitter, just regular Twitter. Everyone's watching it. It is very poignant um, and very necessary that this documentary came out. So first off, I just want to get your thoughts on the documentary. Um, very informative. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it, as far as like getting all the information out, it gave me a little bit more information than I knew in the right. last part, but I had pretty much lived through a lot of this stuff in the 90s, so I've seen mm. all of this before. Lifetime has a, has a very specific formula, too. They'll put the interview subject in that one chair and that one set of lighting, and they'll right. put, like, 100 people in that same slot. But it did the job, yeah. which is what it needed to do. It needed to get the word out there quickly, succinctly, and thoroughly. Exactly. And my goodness, did it ever. Yeah. I mean, you said that you, you know, remember this from growing up in the 90s and whatnot. I was really, I was young when I first heard, especially. We were talking about this off camera before we came in. Um, about, you know, when I think I was in elementary school when I heard that he had married Aaliyah. Mm. And then I vaguely remember later on, like, the whole, you know, sex tape. tape. Yeah. And even from that point, when I was a young girl, I just remember being like, I, I don't want to listen. Like, I wasn't standing for him. Uh -huh. I have never bought any of his music, nothing. So I was like, there's just something inherently wrong. So uh -huh. I was like, you know, these girls are not that much older than I am. And uh -huh. there's just something weird about it. Yeah, yeah. And, we, and you know, I've had that debate, too, as mm -hmm. far as, like, separating the art from the artist. Yeah. I've liked his music, but I've never just been, like, a super R. Kelly fan. I don't even think I've actually bought any of his music. If they play it at the yeah, party, see, I might dance. I, yeah. That's it. yeah. But I am definitely not two-stepping. Definitely in not two-stepping. In the name of love. Definitely not two-stepping. No more two-stepping, <laughs> no, people. No we cancel two-stepping. <laughs> Canceled. All right. Well, okay. Like we said, Black Twitter had a lot to say about it. So did um, celebrities on Twitter. And one person that actually showed up, there were two celebrities, or actually, well, three, but two major ones from the music industry showed up in this uh, docu-series, and a lot of people had been reached out to, uh -huh. but declined. Okay. Because a lot of people had worked with R. Kelly, and the director tried to get them on camera, and they all declined, but two people did. And one of the people um, that did was Chance the Rapper, and uh -huh. he actually caught some flack because of um, one of the quotes that he said in um, the docu-series. So if we can put up his, this was his, I believe, yeah, Twitter response to it. So he says, the quote was taken out of context, but the truth is any of us who ever ignored R. Kelly's stories or ever believed he was being set up, attacked this or attacked by the system, as black men often are, we're doing so at the de detriment of black women and girls. I apologize to all of his survivors for working with him and for taking this long to speak out. So, how do you feel about that? Um, well, first, yeah, there's a lot of... I've been following Chance's career, mm -hmm. and he's kind of carved out a niche as the rapper slash social justice warrior, like more progressive than, than your average rapper. But I remember the, the quote he's referring to, 
We actually what? have a tape of it. Oh, okay. If we can get that. that. Yeah, yeah let's but basically, that, that was crazy, that original quote. Yeah. So this is the full quote. We're sensitive to black male oppression. It's just prevalent in he said overly sensitive all media. The way. And when you see niggas getting beat up by the police, it's, it's men. Like, that's like a, a, a scene that, that you see. Like, slavery for a lot of people, they envision men in chains. Like, but black women are, you know, exponentially higher oppressed and violated group of people. Like, just in comparison to the whole world, you know? Maybe I didn't care because I didn't value the accuser's stories. Like, hmm. because they were black women. Because, like... Right. That, that's crazy. I mean... I understand what he's saying is, but he, but the the snippet that got cut off, it's well, it's the very at the very end. You can hear it. He's basically saying, black men because of uh, our oppression has been basically like over dramatized or something to that effect because we see black men, you know, getting beat by the police and all that. But I beg to differ with that initial assumption because it goes all the way back to Emmett Till when it comes to sex. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. a black man, you know, getting lynched for for whistling at a white woman. So I kind of disagree with his with this whole premise. But I guess for him, he's speaking for himself when he right. says, like, you know, I didn't believe the black woman or I have a tendency not to. You know, I, I try to judge everybody, you know, based on their own credibility. And, yeah, as far as, like, the whole R. Kelly thing, I've, you know, I've just, I've always believed the victims because they were yeah. more credible. And he was always less credible. Completely less credible. Yeah. And, I mean, now seeing, especially in this docuseries, like, the tidbits that I wasn't aware of and how just out in front of the open it was uh -huh. and adults were seeing i'm like how did people let him get away with this for so long how is he still walking around <laughs> yeah. outside of jail yeah. how this yeah. is ridiculous this is crazy um could i jump in real quick on the chad thing too on yeah. the chance the rapper i'm sorry just just because too i noticed just because Ch chas chance is always in the news about saying something very political right and a lot of times he oversteps his bounds he did the same thing he tried to come out and defend kanye mm -hmm. and, and trump and then he had to backtrack chance strikes me as one of those guys who always who probably has a publicist who always pushes him to be ahead of the curve as far as like when it comes to social justice but because he's not necessarily well versed in the issues that he kind of stumbles through it you know less eloquently right so i would so i would just submit this to all you celebrities out there who have a publicist you know pushing you to take a political stance, you know, it's like, you don't necessarily always have to, and if you do, think about it first. Right. I, don't know. I mean, it was, it, it did sting that he said, I probably didn't believe it because it was, or didn't think twice about it because it was coming from, you know, black girls. Yeah, that's weird. Like I, that, I don't know why he got that Yeah, from. that is, just to, to even think that, you know, people think that way, and I know right. people, some people do, they and do. It, it, it sucks, like... And uh, I wanna, I wanna, and, and uh -huh. along those lines, Alina, no, I mean, I've heard it said, I mean, when when uh, non-whites see blacks, they yeah. see blacks as able to. I think it goes back to slavery, able to, to take more abuse, take right. more violence. Those things don't hurt us as much. You know, those things uh, don't violate us as much sexually. There's a whole lot of like uh, subconscious uh, things that go along with the perceptions of black people. Right, right. I, it's just beyond me. But um, John Legend actually was another celebrity uh, from the music industry who went on this docuseries and lent his voice to it. Um, so let's see, what is the first quote? Okay, so the first quote we have from him on Twitter, he says, to everyone telling me how courageous I am for appearing in the doc, it didn't feel risky at all. I believe these women and don't give a fuck about protecting a serial child rapist. Easy decision, I completely agree. I mean, good for John Legend. He saw like, he knows, like it's so obvious, this guy is, a child rapist completely um his second quote on twitter is we should all thank my friend dream hampton who is the director of the docuseries obviously um for her very necessary work to create surviving r kelly these survivors deserve to be lifted up and heard i hope it gets them closer to some kind of justice um it'll be really interesting to see what kind of happens after something mm -hmm. like this you know as far as like investigations and justice for them goes i mean i know that there's statutes of limitations uh, and i think we were talking about this before because i was uh, asking you know there's still these stories that he's keeping women in mm -hmm. his like sex cult and harem allegedly um hope 
are they underage? Do we know? Yeah, or, and I think, th- and it's a lot like, tougher, and it's a lot tougher to prosecute if these right. are like, you know, adult women who've right, gone over there on their own, you know, right. under their own will. Yeah, um, you're talking about like what's going to happen next. Let's let's listen to the, uh, I guess, the interesting um, byproduct of this stuff. Mm-hmm. I heard R. Kelly's coming out with his own like That's site right. to totally surviving refute, the lies, surviving the lies to refute Police. all the lies. And, and guess what? And you can always find something about a witness, you know, that can make them look more compromised, right? And some more than others. Mm-hmm. And and I, and I would even say, uh, I, I like Dream Hampton. I'm a big followers. So I like I like what she's written as far as hip hop and feminism and mm-hmm. black women. But um. She kind of threw a lot of people under the bus who she reached out to, like Jay-Z and a couple of people who didn't want to appear in this movie. Well, it's kind of because of it's a Lifetime movie, and Lifetime does have that kind of image of being kind of tawdry and kind of messy. They're not necessarily known for, I guess, being the most balanced. In other words, I mean, I'm not calling this a hit piece. I thought it was a very good documentary, but right. it's a very good documentary without uh, R. Kelly or anyone speaking up on his, his, his behalf. So That's true. I'm sure yeah. she tried to reach out. Uh-huh. She got her brother from jail. Yeah. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> when they brought the brother from jail, I said, he "No, she the didn't." Yeah, I, my, I like older women. He likes younger women. Yeah, I, my jaw hit the floor. I was like, "He did not." Oh, that. Well, that explains a lot. It's apple doesn't fall far from the tree. But can I say this? Too bad apples. Let me tell you what I read from his brother, uh-huh. and it didn't read well because he said they got him up there in the jumpsuit and everything. Like that's just bad optics. There's no way he's gonna win in that one. But. It, yeah, what he said was, you know, stop, you know, being so hard on my brother. He has his preference. I like. He just likes women. younger. He women. likes younger women. I took that honestly as like a brother, an older brother, trying to like, I don't know, kind of like work on the the publicity angle for his brother and just put it in a broader, obviously too broad of a context. Make it make soft pedal it like, baby, you know, no, maybe he likes girls who are seventeen, <laughs> you know. And baby, it's not fourteen or fifteen, maybe seventeen. You're slapping uh, him on the younger uh, side. That's no, the way I took I it. I took it as he's just as messed up as his brother, <laughs> just as messed up as his brother. For like an older woman. Uh, I don't know. I, don't, I think he was just throwing that in so he doesn't do more time. He might like the young ones too. Okay, I don't okay. know. All suspect. I don't know. All right. Um, somebody else who was part of the documentary. I think they used a clip from his. And this went back, like, years. Like, this should have been the one of the big red flags. There were a lot of different red flags. But actually, uh, Toure, Uh who was, you know, I think working it for MTV at the time. You know, he's worked for a lot of different media corporations and whatnot. Um, He actually interviewed R. Kelly, like, back in the 90s, and asked him about you know, dating teenage girls. And he's and R. Kelly said something to the effect of, well, what age are we talking? I like, remember what? that. Like, that is a softball question. I remember And you that. can't just say no, I don't, like, just lie. Like, I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> you can't even lie about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like that Michael Jackson question. Then we're like, well, do you ever let little kids sleep in the bed? And he's like, well, okay. yeah, you know, what kind of little kids? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't like, know. What? It was something to that out of fact. He was like, yeah, like, what age? Jeez. Uh, yeah, I mean, I come know. on. Um, um, so anyways, we have a t- tweet from uh, Torre, and he says, R. Kelly is a serious predator, and his story has been denied for decades. This current reckoning is long overdue. You're not being intelligent when you say that without... Uh, you're not being intelligent when you say, what about all the white attackers? Oh, what about what all the mm-hmm. white attackers, you know? And mm-hmm. doing that, you're shifting blame and attention, and you're defending Kelly. Sit down. Because, yeah, people were saying a lot of things about on Twitter. Oh, what about these white attackers and this, that, and the other? And it's like, no, that's not about that. We've had all the white attack, or not all, but a lot of the white attackers have their day in court, uh-huh. a la, you know, Harvey Weinstein and uh-huh. everything that came out with the whole Me Too movement. But um, it- definitely people who have been preying on black women and black girls mm-hmm. need to have their day in court. And Me- it is high time this came to light. I agree 100%. And I think what you, what you saw in a lot of the Twitter debate what goes on just as far as, like, the dynamics between, you know, black men and black women, you mm-hmm. know, in our relationships. 
Um, a lot of the things that come up when, when certain, I know certain black men were feeling like, okay, we're experiencing the brunt of this Me Too thing with Bill Cosby. You don't even hear about Harvey Weinstein anymore. So that's a certain point of view. And I don't believe on like, you know, saying what, what about this person did? Yeah, you clean we, up it's your not own a backyard. what about, yeah, it's not yeah. a what aboutism. You clean like, out your, you clean exactly. up your own backyard first. But um, yeah, with this, I think it exposes a lot of cracks in the, uh, in the black community and a lot of like further dialogue maybe we can like have. We definitely on. need to have, exactly. Um, one person, that I loved this Instagram tweet. Uh, Jada Pickett Smith went on Instagram because after this documentary had airs, um, R. Kelly's record streams and I believe sales have been going through the roof. Yeah. What? That's what the, the what? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, she had something to say about that. Let's roll that tape. So I got an article this morning about how R. Kelly's music sales and his streams have spiked substantially since the release of surviving R. Kelly docuseries. And I'm having a really difficult time mm -hmm. understanding why. But I think it's important that I understand why. I really would like for you guys to help me understand what I'm missing. Even if, it, even if I'm missing something that um, I don't necessarily agree with, I just want to understand what I'm missing. So if you could sound off below, that'd be great. And we can continue the conversation Wednesday at 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific time on our Facebook Live. Um, and I really don't want to believe that it's because black girls don't matter enough. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's the or case, that personally. The yeah, I, knew, I don't think that's black the case. Yeah, what, what do you think? Let Jada know. What do you okay. think? So what I, I think. <laughs> because I know what I, I'm with Jada on this one. Okay. I don't get it. And uh, I know we differ on like separating right. the art from the person. Right, right, right. Yeah. I'm even going to go a step further, though. I think that's the dangerous thing with cancel culture in this mm -hmm. case, even though I believe R. Kelly is 100% guilty, and that whole kind of like putting a, a, a scarlet letter A on someone. Um, it, um, the best example I could use is, do you remember when, when uh, Bill Clinton was getting impeached? Yeah. And you know, there was all this, you know, the Republicans that had whipped up this whole frenzy in Congress because right. they controlled Congress to get him to, 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 to convict him, but his numbers actually went up. Because the the liberals and the Democrats were actually felt like he was being bullied, and so they actually and so that's one of the reasons I think the Democrats are even slowing their uh, tone on uh, impeaching Trump too, because there's that there's that in danger of making someone uh, look like. So they're you picked think on. it's the fans, his like Stan fans uh, that are driving Stan fans, but even more important, I guess I just think it's a byproduct more than anything else. If you put too much focus on something, be careful what you get, because or careful, be careful, yeah, because because you might get what you ask for. In the sense, right. if you're going to put all this focus on him the next dialogue is going to be yeah 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 he's guilty but still what's your favorite song like that was a big thing on twitter yeah, like yeah. what songs do you like and everybody's like well i like this one you know and i like that one and they were talking about that on hot 97 and it was yeah. and it's a byproduct of this discussion yeah uh, i just i am not i'm not listening to him I i'm not two-stepping <laughs> he is canceled in my book i mean he's been canceled for a yeah. while i'm not down with that um, yeah, I mean, I, for one person, I'm not, like, part of the whole mob mentality, like, oh, my God, this person's guilty. Like, if right, there's right. enough evidence, then, right. yeah. Like, him doing that, Chris Brown hitting Rihanna. Right, right, right. I'm not down with him anymore, yeah. you know, for the most part. So, it's it, that's just how I feel. I agree with you 100%, but I'm yeah. just going to throw this out, too. The way our, our brains supposedly react to music, mm -hmm. like, it hits us in a part of our brain where it takes right. us back to that time, time. to a certain exactly. memory, where you were at school, at the beach party, right. certain, certain things like that. So, there's certain things about music, you know, I think, which... um. Which I, I think are like scientifically are like out of our control, really. You true, know, it's, it's kind of like a natural yeah, reaction. Yeah, true, definitely. Like when I, <laughs> yeah, when I hear certain songs, I, I get you. Yeah. All right, we're gonna keep it rocking and rolling and moving. Um, moving on to Centoya Brown, who got clemency today. So for those of you who aren't aware of the story, because it was really big on Twitter today. Um, she was actually sentenced in 2004. She was a victim of, uh, you know, human trafficking, child trafficking, and she uh, killed her assaulter and got a life sentence for it at the age of, I believe it was 16. Her John, yeah. Yeah, her John, mm -hmm. exactly, because she was forced into prostitution. Um, and she did it out of self-defense. So, yeah, she was actually, and people have been, ever since the Me Too movement really picked up, people took up the case, and, you know, she's served already 15 years, um, and said, this isn't fair. This isn't fair that she was doing this through self-defense, and she has a life sentence where I think she would have been eligible for parole at, like, 
her late sixties. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I've been I've yeah. been following this case yeah. too, um, and uh, and the whole background about it too. I think she was sixteen at the time, and her pimp was like twenty six. Yeah, his her pimp's name was Cutthroat. Like that was exactly. His name. <laughs> yeah, and he was like basically. She, I heard her one of her testimonies, and it's like, like, where's Cutthroat now? What's he doing? Is he still pimping? Probably. Basic, probably, yeah. probably. And he and his whole attitude was, according to her, was like, don't come back unless you have some money. Like it's a lot, or, or she would get her basically get yeah. her ass whooped yeah so i'm sure and she suffered a lot of trauma and so there's a you know there's i don't think i'm um, necessarily i don't know what happened quote in that bedroom but because she's a minor i think definitely they, they didn't charge her as a minor and i definitely think yeah now they're taking that more in consideration yeah i because it just it wasn't yeah i think it wasn't fair at all um so people on black twitter uh, politicians and stars were you know speaking out today everyone was really excited about it um the first one we have is once again from Jada Pickett Smith. So she uh, tweeted an article and she said, Thank you, Governor Bill Haslam, um, who was the governor of Tennessee, who granted her the clemency. Um, also, Kim Kardashian, you know, she's been on her whole prison reform um, campaign, I guess you could say. Uh, she also said thank you to the governor as well. And. Um, <laughs> That wasn't me, was that? it? I, I think that, that was, was you. <laughs> um, also, we have Stacey Abrams, who ran for governor of Georgia. She says justice has finally been served. Centoya Brown has been granted clemency. This victory belongs to Centoya Brown and to the Tennessee human trafficking activists, especially black women who refuse to concede injustice and instead organize to create change. Um, and one other politician who chimed in on this was Cory Booker from New Jersey, Senator from New Jersey. He said, for too long, our justice system failed a young Centoya Brown. Handling of a life sentence to a young victim of child sex trafficking is not justice. Uh, granting clemency for Centoya was the right decision. Sexual abuse to prison pipeline must end. And he's been very vocal about um, uh you know, prison reform, justice reform, and all that. Good for him. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, people were really excited about this. I was excited, too, because ever since the Me Too movement started and hearing her story, Mm -hmm. you just think, like, this this is a complete injustice. Or people in Florida are getting off for, like, Mm -hmm. stand your ground. And another example of, like, perception of black women, black young black girls falling through the cracks. Exactly. Exactly. All right, so now we're going to move on to our woke segment, as if our first two weren't woke <laughs> enough. We got more wokeness. Yeah. And we're woke in 2019. We're, we're Look woke, at that. We're woke. We're way woke, but we're going to be the right woke in 2019. <laughs> we're going to be the me and Alina, we're going to be the right woke. woke exactly. Because I have problems with the woke community because oh, it's, <laughs> that term has been used. Let me talk to my woke people, my woke mm-hmm. camera. That term has been used to, uh, I guess, to broadly apply to certain social justice things where first it started out as maybe just more like i guess if you're more into like pan-africanism black consciousness things and it's been a, a broad brush has been applied to everything mm-hmm. and i think people use the term uh too broadly too as we'll find out um the segment we're gonna uh, get into right now is on our girl tiffany haddish <laughs> uh Peta had actually got mad at Tiffany I'm for mad at her wearing too. fur. Are you mad at her too? Okay, so yeah, so Peta had got mad at her for wearing fur, and Tiffany had a very interesting response on her IG. If we can throw to that. Hey guys, it's me, Tiffany Haddish, and I just want to give a shout out and a thank you to one of my fans that were here at the Comedy Store tonight who gave me this beautiful jacket. Now, she wasn't planning on it, but she said she loved me, and I was like, if you really love me, let me have your jacket. (laughs) And she did. So thank you so much, boo. I'm going to wear it as much as possible because I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I'm about to start protesting. I'm going to wear fur every day until they stop killing black people. When the police stop killing black people, I'll stop wearing fur. It's my new protest. Mm. So sorry, Peter. Don't be mad at me. Be mad at the police. <laughs> when they stop killing black people, I'll stop wearing fur. Interesting take. See how that go? Because people are important. <laughs> they are. They are. Interesting take, yeah. It is. It's... Thank you, boo. <laughs> I love you. She's still going. Yeah, She's still right. going. <laughs> 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 you can cut it in, Jonathan. Thanks. Uh, okay, so here's my thing yeah. about this. Because I am very, like, 
I'm very human rights, but I'm also very animal rights. Like I'm a vegetarian. Okay. I don't eat meat. Um, I don't want you know animal innocent animals being killed for you know fashion and whatnot. Um, so I think I totally get her protest, and uh -huh. I think it's awesome. I just wish she would find a different thing. But I get why she's doing it because it's mm -hmm. something that strikes a chord uh -huh. in a lot of people's like, and, psyche. And this is one of the this is one of the things I was getting into where wokeness has its own like um, transaction transactionalism, mm -hmm. um, where certain causes, you know, maybe be, we're talking about intersectionality, be for feminism or the, for gay rights and, you know, right. how those things uh, uh, might overlap. And in this particular case, I think it's okay, you can still be for black people not getting shot right. and still not be for wearing furs, but I think for someone like her, if you come at her and it's like, yo, you're coming at me for wearing a fur, and I'm like, yo, what about all this other thing right. going on? Those things to a lot of us are more in the foreground of our mind. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean in, you know, in a perfect world we can break all things down equally, but, but you can only hold people's attention for so long. It's like the whole Black Lives Matter thing, because people were originally, well, well don't all lives matter? Of course all, all lives, lives matter. matter. Yeah. But like if, if these houses are burning down, you know, and your house isn't burning down in your community, and the yeah. problem's here, you don't say, what about my house? You go where the problem is. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, yeah. So that's where I kind of, uh, I kind of, and it kind of leads into. Well, first of all, let me get your uh, take on that. I don't know. It's okay. about the Tiffany thing. The yeah, I mean, like I said, I think I get what she's doing, uh -huh. and I get what you're saying about, you know, that might. It is less of a, you know, uh, what's the word? Not protest, but people being killed is a bigger deal. We think. Yeah. Then, um, you know, another little furry creature, but. In my eyes, this is God's planet. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be doing shit that, mm -hmm. you, you know, <laughs> whether right. it's, you know, uh -huh. killing people or killing animals uh -huh. if it's not for food or, you know, uh -huh. if you're not an indigenous person wearing it for uh -huh. clothing and, like, using all the animal parts uh -huh. and that's how you've lived for, you know, uh -huh. a millennia or whatever, uh -huh. then you shouldn't be wearing fur. Okay. You got 10 seconds to go out to the whole world. What's going to be your message? It's going to be about fur. It's going to be about Black Lives Matter. Which is it? That's Black what I mean. <laughs> Black lives. No. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm I, I'm passionate about both of them, uh, but you know, human lives are very important, and okay. the fact that they're innocently being, you know, killed is yeah. Yeah. I, I, I but mean, still, innocent animals yeah. shouldn't be killed. No, I, <laughs> my sen my sentiments exactly are yeah. they're far more in line of your opinion, but I also think too is that sometimes you only have people's attention for so long, and you only have so many resources, and you have to decide what you're going to use your resources and what you're going to use your platform. I just for. wish you would find a different protest that would strike a chord, and mm -hmm. I don't know what that would be. Mm -hmm. Like that's an interesting thought. Like uh -huh. what could that be? Where it's not like it's one thing being killed uh -huh. or the other, you know? I understand what you're saying, but yeah. it also kind of leads into this other debate okay. we had started where, um, okay, like, well, which cause is more important? Right. Um, are you downing someone others? Are you not going to be along with someone else's cause if you disagree with them on another cause? And uh, so it yeah. goes It goes to uh, our next segment. I'm going to start. This is our woke, yeah. woke movie segment, Alina. <laughs> I don't have any more woke books. Or I, I couldn't find a woke book this week, so I'm going to do a, mo a woke movie, movie segment. segment. Okay. And HBO came out with a great documentary called Say Her Name. It's on Sandra Bland, the life and death of Sandra Bland. And as, as we remember, <coughs> she was killed uh, after a police stop, and she was taken into custody. And then later that weekend, she was found hung in her cell. And there was all this, and there was all these shedding circumstances. There was missing evidence. So uh, there's this whole hashtag, which fits into our whole, you know, Twitter motif of say her name, talking about Sandra Bland. And uh, why don't we just uh, roll the uh, trailer first, and then we could talk about it. Okay. Today, Sandy Speaks is going to focus directly on my white people. What I need you to understand is that being a black person in America is very, very hard. I will light you up. Get out. Wow. Now. Sandy called me, let me know that she had been arrested. How do you go from failure to signal a lane change to dead in jail by alleged suicide? I believe she let them know. I'll see you guys in court. And I believe they silenced her. Do I think this jail had anything to do with her death? No. But moral responsibility wise, absolutely. If 
we want change, we can truly make it happen. Sandy Speaks. Uh, yeah, those of you who have HBO, go check it out or order it. I, I thought it was a great doc. It was very comprehensive. And what I really liked is they captured, um, I guess, the essence of her activism. Right. She was. She had her own like video blog. She would do weekly. I didn't and even daily. know that beforehand that she was like already talking about already this. talking about all yeah. the already talking about all these issues. She was very act, act, active in the uh, Black Lives Matter protests. Mm -hmm. And um, we were talking about the whole intersection. Well, let me just get back to the documentary too. One good okay. thing that they exposed, that, which I didn't know about the case, is that in the jail where she was found hung. The, she was found hung, I guess, by these plastic bags that were fashioned into a noose. Well, first of all... How it, are you going to get plastic bags That's in what cell? I'm saying. The, and, <laughs> and the thing is, it wasn't even one of those things where you can, like, slip and slide and the, and the tension... To, it was just yeah. one set noose, one plastic of plastic trash bags. None of her fingerprints were on it. The cameras were off. So the yeah. cameras were off, yeah. and there were the logs had been forged about when uh, the certain guard is going to check on this particular inmate, this particular time. Those things aren't disputed. And there's no has justice been served? And yeah. you know, and then there's the outside chance. Well, they said, well, maybe she. I think they said she had tried. I don't know who this is coming from. Who's saying this? But I think the law said that she had indicated on her intake slip that mm -hmm. she had tried to commit suicide before. I'd never heard that. So, but they're gonna obviously they're gonna lean on that that maybe that she was suicidal and she got depressed and her family didn't pick her up. But it's a really it's a very good thought provoking right. documentary to see, and it just really just leaves more questions than answers. And mm -hmm. I think and it's just more of a I guess more of a reason that we continue to say her name. Exactly, yeah. say her name, speak her name, talk about this, yep. keep it up in the dialogue mm -hmm. because we don't want it to be another story that just withers away into the abyss and yeah. no justice ever gets done or we never find out exactly what happened say her name sandra yeah. bland and there's another part to this alina uh -huh. um we were talking about intersectionality let me talk to my woke camera here okay <laughs> those of you who know about intersectionality well, first of all it all starts off with identity politics you know it, identity politics is the idea okay well maybe a white working class person votes for this person because they represent their rights, or a black person votes for this uh, particular uh, cause because it represents their rights. A gay person votes for the, for you know someone who represents gay rights, and then you have the whole idea of intersectionality. Well, what do you do when obviously people don't fit in those neat um, those neat categories? You can have a, a black gay woman, or a, I don't know, a disabled right. white man. So um, this came up in the documentary with Sandra Bland because I found out that Glad didn't support her documentary. And right. um, if we can uh, actually just uh, throw to the uh, throw to the um, throw to the link and just scroll down a little bit, it says Black LGBT LGBT community won't support Sandra Bland HBO doc over her homophobic comments. Now, already I have a problem with that because mm -hmm. I have heard nothing about the Black LGBT community not supporting her. I've heard about Glad not supporting her. Mm. So and 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 here and here's what she said. I'll I'll uh, I'll kind of um I'll give you guys the cliff notes. Basically, she was saying uh, black people and, and gays, you know, she feels for her gays, brothers and sisters. You know, she has mm -hmm. gay people in her family. She wants them to have equal rights. But she's, I think they were talking about a case like where if you uh, a same-sex couple goes up to a business like, say, a, a catering company or a cake company, and they're like, I want you to make a cake, you know, for our same-sex wedding. Uh -huh. And if they're Christian, they, they were like, well, you know, we don't want we, our religion, you know, tells us that we can't do that. But, you know, and, and she was basically saying, I think they reserve the right to refuse uh, to refuse uh, service to someone if that goes against their religious beliefs. And then plus, she said, because that's the thing. She said, black people, you can tell we're gay. On, but what I got from her, the essence of what she was saying is that black people, you, you know, we're black, you know, our color on the outside. You don't know somebody's color or you don't know they're gay. You don't mm -hmm. know their sexual orientation when they walk up. But that was another thing she threw out there for argument. But I actually uh, thought she made a good point. But obviously, uh, Glad characterized her statements as homophobic. And um, and before I get into my take, I want to I want to know your take on that. <laughs> <laughs> Put you on the spot. Here's my thing. I don't agree with her viewpoint, but I'm not going Which to. That, uh, you know, it's the business's right to refuse okay. service. I okay. think, you know, everyone wants to be treated equally, mm -hmm. and that's the way I was raised, and that's uh -huh. how I think everyone Even if that's their, their religion, that says yeah. it's a mm -hmm. sin to condone that. Okay. You're, you're running a business. Like, okay. to pick and choose, that's going back to, you know, you're segregating a specific part of the community, and segregation is not okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
yeah, that's how I feel about that. But at the same time, I'm not going to say, well, don't see this movie um, because she has a different viewpoint than you. Mm -hmm. She's still, uh, you know, a minority that underwent something that was horrible. And we do need to, you know, bring light to her name. And I think you can disagree with people on certain points and not completely, like we said, uh -huh. cancel them out. I agree 100%, and I think it just um, it points to a, an evolving discussion we see going mm -hmm. on where supposedly liberals are supposed to, even or even Democrats are all supposed to fall in line, you know, with, of course, like believing in ending racism, supporting gay rights, and uh, a number of other causes in immigration, mm -hmm. and, and 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 it goes to the to the to the farther end. I think with uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, her whole thing is like, I want to eliminate ICE, and that's fine, whole thing. But I like, I didn't hear anything, to anything in her platform about you know reparations. So for me, it goes it, what oh, it wow. goes to, yeah. <laughs> Keep, so it, keep going. I, the point the point <laughs> I'm getting to is that. People who you think would be automatic allies, you think like all people of color would be natural allies, mm -hmm. gay, uh, uh, black, Latino, uh, disabled, whatever you want. People who have been second class citizens. Mm -hmm. You would think we'd be natural allies, and that would make sense. But we aren't necessarily always natural allies And when we were talking about how reasonable people can disagree. And so I think there's a point to be made, and I think this is what mm -hmm. Sandra was saying, is that before you throw your lot in with I'm automatically going to... Um, uh, uh, interlock with these what I call social justice warriors and, and by the way I'm an advocate of social justice I used to teach social justice I just don't like that term social justice warrior because it conjures <laughs> this whole other you know how I feel about that right, right, right. but um uh, but with that said, yeah, I think I think that people need to be selective, black people particularly, but all people need to be selective about who you throw your lot in and like who you chose to make alliances with. Right. You know, but you can't make an alliance with everybody. You know, sometimes you gotta, you know, like you gotta have a hard. But here's stance. the thing: like if she said, you know, I think R. Kelly, it was okay for R. Kelly to like sleep with all those <laughs> young ones. Okay, then she'd be canceled. Because <laughs> that right, ain't right. Right, 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 right. So yeah, yeah. So people don't be don't be throwing your lot in automatically. You know, with this. Okay, whether well, you're on the left or on your right there's a lot there's a lot of nuances in there right like we said intersectionality intersectionality hey word for the day all yeah. right <laughs> we're gonna get on to um our viral moment of the week coming to us from snoop dogg he's always got something to say uh let's just roll this clip because i think it speaks for itself i just want to say this real quick now on the political shit all you people for the federal government that got Getting, not getting paid right now. Ain't no fucking way in the world y'all can vote for Donald Trump when he come back up again. If it is, if y'all do vote for him, y'all some stupid motherfuckers. I'm saying that to y'all early. All you federal government people that's not being paid, that's being treated fucking unfairly right now, not being paid, that's so terrible. And this punk motherfucker don't care. So I'm saying that to say this. When the shit get back on and y'all get y'all jobs back and it's time to vote, <laughs> he gave don't the vote side eye. Please don't. Look what he do. He just don't give a fuck. Y'all, honest, blue-collar, hard-working people can suffer. So if he don't care about y'all, he really don't give a fuck about us. So fuck him, too. And fuck everybody down with Donald Trump. I said he is Snoop Dogg. That's Speak on Snoop. Snoop. That is Snoop. Shut the government down. Nigga, you's a piece of shit. <laughs> Snoop. Okay. <laughs> Snoop. Always keeping on. Breaks it down. Keeping on 100. Uh, yeah, so that was a viral moment. People, I saw people retweeting on Black Twitter. Mm. I mean, it got 2 million views, I think, on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. He's always got something to Snoop, say. And the funny thing, if you can get out of the way, like, I guess, you know, like the vernacular or like the colorful language right. he uses, he, say, he says things very plainly that uh -huh. I think the average person should be able to decipher it. Personally, Okay, I'm gonna incomplete sentences. Incomplete though. sentences. Unlike somebody else. Talking about. <laughs> right, right. He's more articulate than some <laughs> exactly. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think um, I'm gonna. Uh, there's this quote that LBJ said. Not a quote. He said this in discussion, but he said, and he was actually a conservative. He was a Democrat, but he was a conservative mm -hmm. Democrat, and actually used to be a Dixiecrat. And he ended up becoming, you know, more for pro for civil rights, kind of like when the parties were were, right. were changing alignment. But he said what the Republican Party has been successfully able to do, speaking as someone who thought of them or identified with them before, was that he's been that the Republican Party has been able to make people vote against their own, own interests. interests very so, well, very mm -hmm. well. Yeah, hope. 
we can all hope that'll change <laughs> this time. But right, who right, knows? Right, right. You know, uh, yeah, it's it's amazing what they're able to do. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for our first show of the year, Hi. the new year. All right, well, where can people find you, Al? Hey, everybody, Al G. You can find me on Instagram at Al G underscore Jamaica House Film. <laughs> Brat. That's right. And I'm Alina Vision. You can find me on all the interwebs at Alina Vision. And that's Vision with two S's. All right, well, we'll see you guys back here next week, same time. Peace. Yep. From executives Kevin Undergaro, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hopkins, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us. Info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio. Instagram me at KingXO Bay. Thanks for tuning in. The views expressed here are those of the whole song and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.